Amen. One more time. Look at somebody and say, neighbor. Neighbor. Who you with? Who you with? Uh, the reason some of us are chuckling is because we know where these three words come from. I, um, I am a fan of the comedic genre. I love a good action movie, but I really love a good comedic movie. I love to laugh. The Bible lets us know that laughter does the heart good like a medicine. Ain't nothing like a good laugh. Some of y'all would feel a whole lot better if you would stop being so serious sometimes. Okay. Just get you a, a good laugh. Will you help somebody get delivered this morning? Say neighbor. neighbor. I promise it ain't that serious. I promise it ain't that serious. Amen. Uh, go ahead and deliver somebody else. Say other neighbor. Other neighbor. You really want to laugh? You really laugh? Go look in the mirror. Go You can't laugh at yourself. You can't laugh at yourself. You can't really laugh at all. I love to laugh. I love to laugh. There was a time in my life where I, I was ashamed to laugh because I got this big gap between my teeth. Uh, but when I found out who I was, you couldn't stop me from smiling. You couldn't stop me from laughing because I serve a God who will take your insecurity. Oh, yeah. Wrap you in his security okay. and make life all right. Yes. I love to laugh, and uh, there are some great comedians. One of my favorite is Dave Chappelle. Mm -hmm. I love him. Hate him or love him. I love yeah. Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle is a comedic genius. He has this way of articulating hard truths of life in a way that not only make you laugh but make you think. Mm -hmm. I love Dave Chappelle. I love Steve Harvey. Hate him or love him. I love Steve Harvey. Old school Steve Harvey. The one who had the high top with the sharp. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Not bald Steve. Bald Steve is cool, but it's something about high top Steve. He was a little different. But along with Steve came a brother by the name of Bernard Jeffrey McCullough. Bernard Jeffrey McCullough, a.k.a. Bernie Mac, is one of the original kings of comedy. Yes. He started, I want to say, if I remember correctly, somewhere around 1980-ish, uh, he really started to kind of get on the comedic circuit. He would literally do comedy shows in between doing other odd jobs. He was a UPS driver at one time. He was a cook at one time. He was a janitor at one time. But all the while, while he was doing this, uh, he would still find time to do comedy. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad about it because if he had stopped pursuing his dream, and that's a word for somebody, if he had stopped pursuing his dream, many of us would not have laughed through, through some of the hard times in our lives. Yeah. Look at, your, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, somebody's waiting on you. So you can't give up. Most comedians have what they call a tagline. They have this thing that they say and they're known for saying it. Well, with Bernie Mac, his tagline was, who you with? Who you with? Now, some of you are saying, Pastor Mike, what in the world does Bernie Mac have to do with the birth of of a son to a virgin. Well, uh, not much, not much, but it's, it's, it's the name that I want to talk about on today. Because the name Emmanuel, we translate it, God is with us. That's important because Bernie Mac would raise the question, who you with? But Isaiah raises the question, who's with you? And he reveals that who's with us is Emmanuel. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I think that in the church, we hear things so much that we become numb to just how powerful and how significant they are. You can go to many churches and they'll sing songs like Emmanuel, we worship you, and, and we begin to worship Emmanuel. But have you ever stopped to ask yourself, why do we worship Emmanuel? What is so significant? What is so powerful about that name, Emmanuel? Well, that's why you come to AL3C, because we like to ask the hard questions and get to the bottom of it. And so today I want to share with you um, what it means, what it means, uh, or excuse me, what does the name Emmanuel reveal to us about Jesus? Did you come to take some notes today? Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm going to give you a little overview of the scripture, then I'm going to get in to what I actually want to preach. Now, I need y'all to pray for me, because I'm literally going to preach four words today. 
Normally, I'm, I'm preaching verses. I'm literally going to preach four words. That is not an easy task. And if you can see my notes, I ain't got much to work with up here. So y'all, please pray for me. I, the Lord's going to do something. I just don't know what exactly he's going to do. And so, again, I want to share with you what the name Emmanuel reveals to us about Jesus. Now, what's going on in this text? Uh, the Lord sends Isaiah to King Ahaz uh, to let him know that there are two kings that have joined forces against him. Uh, we would call this in modern times banking. He, the, he's letting the king of, of Jerusalem know you're about to get banked. There are two kings uh, who have decided they're not going to uh, uh, come and face you one on one, but they're going to actually join force, forces together and they're going to come against you. Double they bank. want to oh, double bank. They want to overthrow your kingdom. However, he sends Isaiah and Isaiah encourages the king that uh, he doesn't have to fear because they will not succeed. He says, listen, I know that you are outnumbered. I know that it is more of them than it is of you, but don't be scared. Don't be fearful because even though it's more of them than it is of you, they will not succeed. And I don't know why I'm the only one that's excited about that. Maybe you've never had a point in your life where it felt like you were outnumbered. Maybe there was never a point in your life where it felt like there was more against them than it was of you. Maybe you've never had a point in your life where it literally felt like you were being overwhelmed by the trials of life but I'm here like Isaiah this morning to tell you don't get scared now because no matter how big the situation seems no matter how scary the giant may be no matter how stressful the situation may be it will not succeed the Lord then through Isaiah tells the king in fact I'm so confident that it won't succeed that I want you to ask me for a sign God says, I'm so confident in my ability to be God. I'm, 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 I'm so sure of my swag that you can ask me for anything. I don't care how big it is. I don't care how small it is. I want you to ask me for a sign. Now, Ahaz is better than me. Because if God had asked me to ask him for a sign, listen, I got a list of signs that I'm just waiting to see. Ahaz says, uh, nah, I'm good. Because I would dare not tempt the Lord. Now, if you read this too fast, you're going to miss what's happening. Because that sounds real churchy and it sounds real humble. But the truth of the matter is Ahaz was not being humble. See, the fact is Ahaz was already working out a plan of his own. Ah, okay. So him saying, I don't need God to interfere because oh, I don't need a sign uh, uh, because I don't want to test the Lord. My God was really him saying, I'm good. I don't really need God because I'm already working something out. And some of y'all don't want to say amen to that because you acting like you always believe what God says. You acting like you always just rely on the Lord. You act like you really do trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding and I'm so glad Isaiah is the bad mamma jamma that he is because in essence he said listen uh, uh, you, it's, it's bad enough that you tried to tempt man but the devil is a lie. You ain't about to front on my God. You ain't about to act like my God isn't the beginning and the end. You're not about to act like my God ain't Alpha and Omega. You're not about to act like my God can't do all things. That he's the Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty and bad. Don't try to sit here and flex on my God. In fact, here's what I'm going to do for you. Since you won't ask for a sign, I hear the Lord saying, good, I'll give you one. And he says, this is going to be the sign that I give to you. A virgin is going to give birth to a son. Now, y'all looking at me like that's an everyday situation. Like that's an everyday occurrence. Like you just walk down the street and see little Mary's walking around through the neighborhood. <laughs> he says, here's how you're going to know. And this is the part that blesses me. Here's how you're going to know that your enemies are not going to win. Because I'm going to birth a hero in an impossible situation. He says, a virgin is going to give birth to a son and it gets better. And she's going to name him Emmanuel. If you read this in Matthew, he says that this was the fulfillment of the prophecy when Jesus was born. It was the fulfillment of this prophecy and that the people would call him Emmanuel. Why is this significant? Why is this significant? Because that name Emmanuel 
has more power than you think. Y'all ready to take some notes? Yeah, yeah. What does the name Emmanuel reveal to us about Jesus? Well, first of all, we got to break this name down. Here's my four words I'm about to get into. Uh, the common translation of Emmanuel is God with us. But if you read it in the Hebrew, y'all know how I do. If you read it in the Hebrew, the true translation is not God is with us. It's with us is God. I'm going to make it make sense. It's not God is with us. See, that's that's because we like to read things a certain way. But if you know anything about the Jews, they actually read backwards. <laughs> and so as this is written, it's not God is with us. It's with us is God. I'm going to prove it. The name is Emmanuel. Now, we say Emmanuel, but it's truthfully Emmanuel. Okay, let's break this thing down. Emmanuel. Now, L should be standing out to you because if you know the names of God, there are a couple of them that start with L. Well, L is a shortened version, a shortened form of God. And so it's Emmanuel. In other words, with us is God. Now, even though that's how it should be, I'm going to keep it familiar to you. We're going to deal with it as God is with us. And let's deal with God. The first thing uh, the name Emmanuel reveals to us about Jesus, it reveals to us that he is able. I'm going to give you four A's today. He is able. Somebody say he's able. He's able. Now, y'all should be a lot more enthused about that because you know you ain't able. And so the fact that he is able ought to make you excited. But that's all right. I know we're a Christian community center. We're not a church. And so y'all a little bougie. But I'm going to give you a reason to shout in a moment. In a moment. Uh, he's able. Somebody say he's able. he's able. The first thing the name Emmanuel reveals to us about Jesus is that he's able. What do I mean? Again, L. L. Somebody say L. L. Uh, L is the shortened form of God. However, when you look at it in the Hebrew, it's not just God. It means strong. It means power. And here's the one I love. It means mighty one. Ah, so in essence, he's saying with us is the power. With us is the strength. With us is the mighty one. Why is that important? Well, again, it tells us that God is able. It tells us that God is able because in essence, God is power. God is strength. God is a mighty one. The psalmist says it this way. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. In other words, he's a God who is able to do what he said he would do. Uh, he's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. Somebody shout he's able. He's able. The name Emmanuel tells us that God is able, but I'm going to see if I can make this make uh, make sense. Uh, I was reading an article, and this is why you come to AL3C, because your pastor reads more than the Bible. Uh, I was reading an article from NASA, and it was talking about what powers the sun, because I'm going to be honest, as I was reading this text, I was like, hmm, God is powerful, but what powers God? Mm. I, maybe y'all don't think like I think, but when I'm reading the scripture, I, really, I like to get deep in that thing. So I'm like, God is all power, but, but where does God's power come from? And, and, and I was led to an article by NASA about the sun, what powers the sun. And there was one line in that article that made me want to throw my laptop across the room. Can I read this one line from the article? My God, the article says the sun is a huge ball of hydrogen and helium. This is the part that made me shout. Held together by its own gravity. <laughs> oh, my God. I said that too fast. Can I read that one more time? The sun, the S-U-N, is a huge ball of hydrogen and helium held together by its own gravity. Let me make this make sense to you. What that's saying is that the sun is so powerful that nothing else in the solar system can contain it. And so the sun contains itself with its yeah. with itself. My God. Ooh, you, you never know what you're going to learn at AL3C. I'm going I'm to give you some theology. I'm going to give you some astrology. I might even give you some psychology when we go. But, 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 but I began to ponder that thing. I began to ponder that thing. The sun is a huge ball that's filled with power and it's so powerful that nothing else in the solar system can contain it. And so it decides to contain itself. Now, if that's what the S-U-N can do, now it makes sense when it comes to the S-O-N. 
that God is so powerful and Jesus and God are one. And so if God the Father is all powerful, that means God the Son is all powerful. And Jesus is so powerful that he looked all across and realized that there was nothing that could contain his power. And he said, since nothing in the solar system can contain my power, then baby, I will contain my power within myself. What powers God? God powers God. And that's important to us because if God is powered by God, that means God does not have to rely on anything outside of himself to keep himself. And if God can keep himself, then baby, I know God can keep you. And the solar system proves it. Because as I continue to read, I discovered that the solar system is held together by the sun. Ah, don't miss this. The same gravity that contains the sun within itself is the same gravity that keeps every planet in its order. Ah, so in essence, what that's saying is that what powers the sun powers the planets. Oh, oh I'm getting excited. So that means what powers God is the same thing that powers me. Ooh. And this is why it's important that he's Emmanuel, because how many of you know that there are times in life where you feel powerless? Oh, but I came to remind somebody this Sunday morning that when life has you feeling powerless, when life has you feeling like there's no more in you, when life has you feeling like you ain't got no more fight left, I came to tell, tell somebody that Emmanuel is with us, that the Mighty One is with us, and the same God that powers himself is the same God that powers you. And I don't know about you, but I'm more confident going into tomorrow morning because I know that there's some mornings I wake up and I don't know where my power is going to come from. But I hear the psalmist saying, I will lift up my eyes unto the hill, knowing that all my help comes from the Lord. When I can't find the power in myself, I'm so glad that I got a power that powers itself. And if God can power himself, if God can hold himself together, then God can power my world and he can hold my world together. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. <sighs> oh, sir. Talk about it. But something messed me up. Something messed me up. Because as I was reading this article, I discovered uh, that, that scientists believe that the sun is, is a little less than halfway through its life cycle. Scientists believe that there is going to come a time where the sun is going to turn completely red and burn out. Now, they believe that we are millions of years away from that, so we won't see it in our lifetime, praise the Lord. But but, but that bothered me. It, it bothered me because I'm like, well, well, God, you just drew a parallel between the sun and the sun. And and, and that, that's bothersome because I just read that the sun is going to end. And he said, uh, that's where we differ. <laughs> See, the sun will come to an end. But God is so God. He says, I have no ending. And in fact, not only do I have no ending, baby, I am the end. <laughs> That, that, that I will never run out and this is what I want to encourage you with on this morning because you may run out of energy but I'm so glad I serve a God who is so full of energy the psalmist said it this way he neither sleeps nor slumbers I serve a God who's better than the energizer bunny baby he keeps going and going and going and going and the truth of the matter is I've watched commercials where the energizer bunny ran out of energy but I've been alive 36 years and I've yet to see God run out of energy. The psalmist said it this way, I've been young and I've been old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken and I dare you to give God 10 seconds of praise because as long as you've been alive, one thing you have never seen is a God who ran out of power and I'm so glad that no matter how old I get, no matter how frail I get, no matter what comes and what goes, I serve a God who never loses his power. Yes. Try. Somebody say he's able. He's able. And if he's able, that tells me something that makes me want to jump out of these boots. If he's able, that means nothing is impossible. Ah, listen, if I tell you nothing else on today, baby, take that to the bank. That with God, all things are possible. That means no matter how difficult the situation may be, no matter how frustrating the conundrum may be, no matter how devastating the hit may be, God is able to deliver, and God is able to heal, and God is able 
to comfort and God is able to deliver and God is able to provide and God is able to love and God is able to give peace and God is able to keep you in your right mind and God is able to bring you out of that situation and God is able to turn the decision around and God is able to keep your babies and God is able to do the impossible. Because God is all powerful. And if God is all powerful and God is with us, then that means all power is with us. Somebody say he's able. He is able. He's able. That name, Emmanuel, lets us know that not only is he all powerful, but that that all power is with us. And I don't know who I'm talking to on today, but, but you've been feeling like, God, I ain't got nothing left. God, I have run out of tears to cry. God, I have run out of my fight. God, I don't have no more get up in me. And God, I hear him like Jesus was talking to the Apostle Paul. Good, because in your weakness, my strength is made perfect. I'm so glad that when my strength runs out, maybe his strength comes in. I'm so glad, like a rest in the WWE that when life is kicking my butt and I don't have no more get up, I can stretch out my hand and I can tag heaven in and all of heaven will come to my rescue. Is there anybody here who's ever been in a situation where it felt like life was beating you all the way down? Ah, but you lifted up your hands and you tagged heaven in. You lifted up your hands and said, God, I ain't got no more. You lifted up your hands and you said, God, if you don't do it, it can't be done. You lifted up your hands and say, God, I quit. You lifted up your hands and say, God, I can't take no more. And this is why we lift our hands on Sunday morning. I don't know about you, but I don't just lift my hands to praise. I lift my hands and surrender. I lift my hands and say, God, I ain't got it. So God, you gotta have it. I lift my hands to tag heaven in. Because when I'm not able, he's able. Not only is he able? But but if he's Emmanuel, that means we're never alone. Yes, that's right. Yes, yes, yes. Y'all make me work hard up here. It lets us know he's able, but it also lets us know we're never alone. Don't miss that. I didn't just say you're not alone. I said you're never alone. Okay, y'all y'all don't know what words mean. Uh, uh, you're never alone. There's a difference between just not being alone and never being alone. See, not being alone means there's still the possibility of aloneness, but to never be alone means that there is never a point in my life where I am alone. No matter how many folks are in the room or out of the room, I'm never alone. No matter how many people come in my life or go out of my life, baby, I'm never alone. And the truth of the matter is some of y'all ought to send somebody a thank you text message instead of a I miss you text message. You're saying I miss you because you think you alone, but you should be saying thank you because you left me with God. You're never alone. But, but okay, you can't celebrate because you don't know what I mean by that. Okay, let, let, let me break this thing down. So, so, so as she shared earlier, two of my, my best friends are Miriam and Webster. And so I went to Miriam and Webster to, to try to get a breakdown of what this word is means. Now, again, we looked at God. Now we got to deal with is. He says, mm-hmm. God is. Okay, so what does is mean? I discovered that is is a present tense third person singular of be. I know. Uh, I'm going to say it again and I'm going to break it down. It is a present tense third person singular of be. So so, so in essence, uh, uh, when we say God is, in essence, uh, it's a present tense. Again, that's the tense that speaks to the time. So it's not a future tense. It's not a past tense, but it is a present tense. Okay. Uh, past tense is was. Future tense is will be. Uh, but present tense is. Okay. Uh, he says, not God was with us. Not God will be with us. Uh, but God is with us. Okay. There's a difference. Uh, uh, because if he is with us, that means it's now. Come on. And, and Bishop, I think I get why the writer of Hebrew says, now faith. <laughs> ah, because the only tense God deals in is now. Ah, some of y'all got will be faith. 
Some of y'all got was faith. God says I only respond to is faith. Now faith. God is now. And some of the, some of y'all, I gotta reprogram your theology because you read the Bible and you read miracles as though He was a miracle working God. And you read the Bible and you get to Revelations and you think He is a will be miracle worker. But I came to serve the devil. Notice on today that my God is not a was, my God is not a will be, but my God is an is. He's a now God. He's a present tense God. And here's the thing. He's always present. Oh, in essence, it gets better. It gets better. He's a present tense God. Okay. And he's present tense because, again, he is the beginning and he is the end. So if he's the beginning and he's the end, then that means his presence is the present. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Oh my God. I'm going to try this again. He's the beginning. He's the end. So his presence is the present. Okay, so when we when he says God is, what he's saying is that you are always in the presence of the presence. Oh my God. And if I'm always in the presence of the presence, oh my God, then that means that there is no presence that can handle my presence. Oh, I'm going to say that again. Y'all stop getting intimidated when you walk in certain rooms because when your presence walk in, there's no presence that can deal with the presence you bring with your presence because we are always in his presence. His presence is the present. And if we are living in the present, then we are living in his presence. Mm -hmm. There is never a moment in your life where you are away from the presence. The Bible backs me up. The song writer said, where can I go to escape the presence of the Lord? If I ascend as high as the, as the sun, he's there. If I make my bed in hell, he's there. In other words, you can't hide from the uh, come here, Adam. The Bible says that Adam ate of the tree that God told him not to eat from. And he made a foolish mistake. He went and jumped behind a bush. As though jumping behind the bush took him out of the presence. Ah, God's presence is the present. And so even though he was hiding behind the bush, can I help you? It wasn't that God didn't know where he was. He just wanted Adam to recognize, baby, you can't hide from me. I, I, I know where you are. I want you to recognize where you are. Adam, where are you? I hid myself. Adam, you ain't hide yourself because you're always around me. My presence is the present. And some of y'all are struggling to sleep at night. I'm going to help you. You're struggling to sleep at night because there's not a warm body next to you. But I beg to differ because Jesus said, Lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the age. Baby, I don't need nobody to wrap their arms around me because the Holy Spirit will wrap his arms around. I don't need nobody to walk with me because the Holy Spirit is walking with I don't need nobody to go to the movies with. I'll buy two tickets just because and save a seat for the home. I don't need nobody to go to brunch with me. I'll buy two meals and have brunch with the Holy Spirit. Ah, he's always with us. So I'm never alone. He always is. He always is. I remember growing up, this is random. Some of y'all heard me share this before though, but I remember growing up, I don't know why, but I had this this uh this strange infatuation uh with lamb chop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not the food, yeah. the show. Lamb chop and friends. I don't know why I like this show so much. Okay. I, I really don't know, but I would tune in faithfully to watch Lamb Chops play along. I, I love that show. I don't know what it was, but I would tune in. And once I got in front of that TV, I wasn't moving until it went off. And every episode of the show, at the end of the show, they would sing a song. And the song was, 
This is the song that never ends, and it goes on and on, my friends. Some people started singing it, not knowing what it was, and they'll continue singing it forever just because this is the song that never ends. And the song keeps going, and the song keeps going, and the song keeps going. But here's the thing. They say it's the song that never ends, but at the end of 30 minutes, it would stop. Now that's interesting to me because again it's set up in such a way that it should be perpetual but but at the end of a 30 minute block the song would go off until there was another episode. So what that tells me uh, is that it is possible for never ending to really be never ending. And God says, I'm a lot like the song, but here's the difference between me and the song. Uh, Someone had to start the song and someone had the ability to end the song. But I'm God. I started myself. And can't nobody in me but me. And so the same way Lamb Chop had a song that never ended but did, I'm so glad I serve a God who never ends. From ever, uh, from everlasting to everlasting is what the Bible says. He is God. He never ends. This relationship may end, but God don't end. Ah, this situation may end, but my God don't end. I don't know how these bills gonna get paid, but I know my God don't run out. I don't know how long I'm gonna be in this scenario. But I know my God don't end And it's something about a God Who knows no ending And he knows no ending Because he is the end We're never alone There are some of you Who've been thinking you're alone God I wish someone I had someone to go through this with me And he's saying Baby, I've been here the whole time. (laughs) You're saying, God, I wish I had someone to talk to about this. And he's saying, baby, just open up your mouth and start talking. I'm a God that does not sleep nor slumber. So, baby, just talk to me until you go to sleep. (laughs) Because you're going to run out before I do. There are some of you who've wrestled with this question, and I hear the Lord speaking to you. You're saying, God, where were you when? Because there are moments in your life where you felt like God forsook you. There are moments in your life where you felt like God just left you to die. Some of you are saying, God, where were you during the molestation? God, God, where were you when when they ran my name in the dirt? God, where were you when they laid me off for years? God, where were you when he left me with these nappy-headed kids? God, where were you when my own mama or my own daddy threw me away? God, where were you when folks used me until they used me up and I had no more? God, where were you? And I hear the Lord saying on this morning, baby, I was there. Now, some of you are saying, God, how is it possible for you to be there? It was the most painful time of my life. It was the most traumatic time of my life. It was the most stressful time in my life. God, if you were there, why did you allow it to happen? And here's the thing about God's power. God doesn't just have the power to stop a thing. God has a power to keep you in a thing. God, where were you when I was being attacked? I was keeping your mind. God, where were you when they forsook me? I was there comforting you and keeping you from the edge. God, where were you when I was contemplating suicide? I was there speaking life into you. I'm so glad that he doesn't just have the power to snatch me out, but he's a God who has power to come into my situation and keep me in the middle of it. Come here, three Hebrew boys. The Bible lets us know that there was three brothers, Shadrach, Meshach, and a bad Negro, and they found themselves in a fiery situation. The king said, light the fire uh, as high as you can light it. And they lit the fire so high that when they threw the three Hebrew boys in, the brothers who threw them in got consumed by the fire. And after they threw them in the fire, I love this part. After they threw them in the fire, the king felt good about himself. He was like, yeah, I'll teach y'all not to worship me. But then he had to look again. He said, wait a minute. Uh, Did not we throw three folks in there? And someone looked at the king and said, yeah, king, we saw it. You threw three brothers in there. He says, well, wait a minute, because I see a fourth one, and he looks like the Son of Man. What am I saying? When God may not always take you out of the fire, but we serve a God who will get in the fire with you, and if God is with you in the fire, my God, the fire
you can't touch you. The Bible says they came out of the fire and you couldn't smell smoke on them. And some of you, that's your testimony today. The only reason you don't look like what you've been through is because God's power was in the trauma keeping you. He's able. And not only is he able, but because he's able, we're never, somebody say never, never. alone. I rebuke the spirit of loneliness out of this room. And I pray that the presence of God will begin to so saturate us that we all, we walk around like we got an entourage. That we walk in the office tomorrow like we got a whole squad with us. That we walk into a relationship uh, knowing that we got help to decipher whether they good or bad. That we enter into friendships uh, not trying to fill a void because the void has already been filled by the mighty one who walks with us. We're never alone. What does this name Emmanuel tell us about Jesus? It tells us that he's able. It tells us that we're never alone. Can I give you a third one? It tells us that he approves us. He approves us. Some of y'all can't shout because you've been rejected so long. Approval don't even make sense to you. But he approves us. He approves us. So again, that's God is with God is with. Okay. Uh, so again, I went to my friends, Miriam and Webster, uh, uh, and I looked up this word with. This word with is used as a function word to indicate combination, accompaniment, presence, or addition. So when he says God is with, in essence, it's, it's what I was just hinting at, that God, because he's a present presence, he's always with. He's always beside. He's always in the company of. So again, you're never alone because God is with. God is with. God is with. Now, here's the thing. You can't be with if you're not in. I said again. You can't be with if you're not in. So if God is with us, that means he's in it with us. And this is the, the good news of Jesus Christ. And, and this is why I love the name Emmanuel, because the Bible says in the beginning was the word yes. and the word was with God and the word was God. And without the word was nothing made that was made. But then you jump down a couple of verses and it says, and the word became flesh and dwelled among us. Among is an adjective of with. OK, y'all missed the revelation. OK. Jesus is with us. And what separates Jesus, no disrespect to no other gods, but ain't no God like my God. What, what sets Jesus apart is that he's God in the flesh. Okay. He's with us so much that he put on what we put on <laughs> to then conquer what we're going through. I said that too fast. Okay. Because some of you have the mindset that nobody understands your situation. Come on, come on. Oh, but we got Emmanuel. Yes. And this is why I don't look for validation from nobody. I don't look for, listen, I don't care if you never understand what I'm going through. Because the Bible lets me know that we have a God who loved me so much that he said there's nobody in the world who will be able to relate to what you're going through. And since nobody in the world can relate to what you're going through, I'm going to put on a skin suit. And I'm going to walk through the same trials and I'm going to walk through the same tribulations and I'm going to walk through the same frustration and I'm going to deal with the same depression and I'm going to deal with the same suicidal thoughts because when no one else can understand you. The writer says, we have not a high priest who cannot be touched with our infirmities, but was tempted in every, somebody say every, every. was tempted in every way, yet without sin. So watch this. That means there's nothing that you go through that Jesus didn't go through. Wow. Ah, he's with me. But not only is he with me, when you can't understand me, when I can't find the words to articulate to you what I'm going through, to make you understand what I'm going through. Listen, I got to get to a place and I hope I deliver somebody. You got to get to a place where when you don't have the words to encapsulate what you're going through and folks look at you like you're stupid in the face. When you try to tell them what you're going through, you need to just throw your hands up and say, listen, you don't understand, but I know a God who does. And baby, if you never.
never understand it. I'm so glad that he always understands me. My family may not understand me, but I'm so glad my father does. My friends may not understand me, but I'm so glad my father does. Church folks don't always understand me, but I'm glad my father does. He understands me because he's walked a mile in my shoes. But he didn't stop there. He said, in this world, you will have troubles, but be of good cheer. I've overcome. So in essence, God being with us means that there is one with us who has already beat the game of life we're playing. Yeah. Ah, ah, okay. I, I, I remember telling this story some time ago. I remember uh, I used to spend a lot of time with my cousins. And one of the things that we used to love to do is play Nintendo. Now, when the Super Nintendo came out, my God, it was it was exclusive. It was official. I love the Super Nintendo. And one of my favorite games on Super Nintendo was Super Mario World. It's a big game. That game, you, you can't play it in one day. It is a long game game. And when it came out, I used to love playing it. Every time I would go to my cousin's house, I would start playing Super Mario World, but I would always get to a level that I could not beat. And I remember one day just struggling. I got so upset that I just threw the controller down. My cousin asked me, what's wrong? I said, I just can't beat this level. He said, give me the joystick. And I was a little slow because it took me a while to get to where I was and I didn't want him to mess me up. But he said, I need you to give me the joystick. And so I gave him the joystick and he started playing the game and he got to the level that I kept losing on and he beat the level I was mad I was livid I was ready to throw toys all around the room because I'm like I kept coming to this same level and I couldn't beat this level how in the world did you beat this level and he looked me in the face and said I already beat it before <laughs> some of you are in a space where you keep hitting the same wall and you keep finding yourself in the same fight and you keep finding yourself in the same struggle and you keep finding yourself in the same situation over and over again. And you're saying, God, will I ever beat this level? And I hear the Lord saying to somebody on, on this morning, baby, give me the joystick, because if you give me the joystick, I will go ahead and beat this level. Because the truth of the matter is, over 2000 years ago, I came and beat that depression. Over 2000 years ago, I came and beat those suicidal thoughts over 2000 years ago. Ago, I came and beat that loneliness. Over 2,000 years ago, I came and beat that frustration. Over 2,000 years ago, I beat unemployment. I, I beat jealousy. I beat heartache. I beat heartbreak. I beat resentment. I beat generational curses. I beat generational habits. I beat the drug addictions. I beat the alcoholism. I beat the abusive behavior. Over 2,000 years ago, I came and beat it. And you can keep holding on to the controller as long as you want to. But is there anybody here who says, Jesus, I'm giving you the wheel, and Jesus, I'm trusting you to drive, and Jesus, I'm trusting you to do what only you can do. Jesus, get in the game with me. And that's the beautiful thing about Jesus. When you ask him to get in, he won't say no. He'll just say, scoot over. <laughs> but that's not all with means. Bishop, it gets gooder and gooder. It's not just used as a function word to indicate combination, accompaniment, presence, or addition. It means ooh, on the side of, watch this, watch this, and this one is in all caps. It's on the side of and for. Try this again. It's on the side of and four. So, so let's let's try this again. Uh, Emmanuel, God is with us. But I just told you that with means on the side of or four. So God is for us. Okay, y'all don't read y'all Bibles. Okay, if God be for us. He's more than they against us. So what's powerful about Emmanuel, and, and we say this every week, every week at the end of service, I hope you get it in your spirit. I say, uh, my life is important. I live on purpose. I live beyond limitation. I have the advantage in every situation. 
Why do I have the advantage in every situation? I'm glad you, had, you, I'm glad you asked. Because God is for me. And if God is for me, he's greater than those who are. Don't, please don't miss this. I have the advantage in every situation. How, Pastor Mike? Because God is for me. Okay, there are people who are against me. There are forces that are against me. There are situations that are against me. In other words, there are things that are not in my favor. But it doesn't matter what's not in my favor because I'm in his favor. I said that too fast. Uh, it doesn't matter what's not in my favor because I'm always in his favor. And if God be for me, he's greater than what's against me. And some of you got to leave the church today and lift your head up high. Uh, walk with a pep in your step like you haven't walked in a long time and walk in a confidence that there is no place you can go where you don't have the advantage because you plus God is always greater than anything you're facing. I know it's a million of them, but you plus, I love God's math. God's math don't make sense because it may be ten of them against you, but you plus God is greater. It may be a hundred bills against you, but you plus Plus God is greater. Hallelujah. Your heart may have been broken five times, but you plus God is. I'm so glad God's math don't make sense because he lets me know he takes the foolish things to confound the wise. Wow, okay. And that's why some folks don't like you now because they look at your life and the math don't matter. Talk about it. Uh, they look at your life and the math think, how in the world are you still going? I know what your check look like because God's math. <laughs> How are you even out here trying to date again? Because God's math. <laughs> Why in the world would you keep going to church? Because God's math. <laughs> you gave that book another chance? Yep, it don't make sense, but God's math. I, I love that God's math don't make sense uh, because truth of the matter is my life don't always make sense. And this is why I love what Paul wrote. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. How in the world are you still in your right mind? God's math. Some of you need to make that your hashtag for the rest of 2023. Uh, they just laid me off from work. Hashtag God's math. Oh, my God. They told me it's going to take a another year to publish this book, but it's still getting published. God's math. They told me my baby getting kicked out of school again. It's cool. I was thinking of moving them anyway. God math. They still bullying me at the church and causing all this church hurt, but I'm going to keep coming in there, lifting my hands, opening my mouth. Right? Hashtag God's math. He approves us because he's with us. He's for us. And no matter what's against me, God is for me. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad about it. I'm a young black man in America. There's a whole lot of stuff against me. But I walk in every room like I'm the baddest thing in the room. Because if God is for me, he's greater than what's against me. They can't hold no promotion from me. God's mad. Uh, they, they, they can't hold an opportunity from me. God's mad. Uh, they can't stop me from moving forward. God's mad. They can't stop me from buying another house. God's mad. They can't stop me from going on a lot, laying my hand on something, and walking out with it. God's mad. He's for me. He's for me. And I'm so glad that he doesn't need your permission to do it. I'm so glad God does not check with the folks around my life before he does something in my life. And that's why folks can't stand you now. Because they can't figure out why in the world God keeps blessing you the way he bless you. Because, let's be honest, some of y'all are righteous and ratchet sometimes. And sometimes folks see more of your ratchetness than they see your righteousness. But I'm so glad that his mercies are new every day. I'm so glad that goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. What does that mean? That means as I'm messing it up, his goodness and mercy is cleaning it up. And I can lift up my hands 
and I can open up my mouth because the righteousness of Jesus Christ is on my life. I'm so glad I don't have to stand in my righteousness because Paul said my righteousness is like filthy rags and God is so good. He said since your righteousness is so so up, well, I'm going to put Jesus' righteousness on you because as long as his righteousness is on you, I can keep blessing you. Baby, I don't take credit for not a single blessing in my life. It's his righteousness on me. Baby, I'm team borrowed righteousness. Not only did Jesus borrow my tomb, but I borrow his righteousness. And because I borrow his righteousness, he keeps on blessing me. What is the name of Emmanuel? Revealed to us about Jesus. It tells us that he's able. And there is nothing impossible for God. And I need us to walk out of this building with a faith that says I can have what he says I can have. I can do what he says I can do. Uh, impossible is not a part of my vocabulary because I serve a God who is all powerful and he never runs out of power. Uh, it lets us know that we are never alone. I don't need the validation. I don't need the adoration. I don't need the admiration. I don't need nothing from nobody around around me. Listen, I'm in a season of my life where those in my life are accessories. God is my necessity. Everyone else is an accessory. I appreciate your words of affirmation, but I already know what he says about me. I, I'm glad you want to spend time with me, but I got to spend some time with the Lord. I, I, I'm glad you want to take me out to dinner. Oh, but man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I, I, I appreciate you being in my life, but the truth of the matter is, you you are not a necessity, you're an accessory. Ah, and I will never put an accessory before a, a, a necessity. Ah, and some of us have messed up because we've made people our world and they have shattered our world. But I need you to get back to where you belong and make God your everything. Make everybody else something. He approves of us. He approves of us. I don't do everything right. And I'm glad that's not the requirement. Yeah. And can I be honest with you? Yeah. The reason I live the way I live is because I know he loves me when I live bad. Mm. So that's what motivates me. Yeah. Paul said it this way. Shall we sin that grace may abound? God forbid. But when, when you know you messed up, yeah. oh, when you know you yeah. covered yeah. yourself in yeah. some dirt that Clorox couldn't get off your life and God cleans you up yeah. and folks don't see yeah. none of the yeah. mess that you was in, that ought to make something in you click to say, God, this is my last yeah. time. I'm crying my last tear. This is my last time messing with them. It's my last time dealing with that. It's my last time messing with this. God, because you love me at my worst, I owe you my best. Yes. 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 But I don't know how many amens I'm going to get on this one. Oh, yes. Not only, not, not only is he able, not only are we never alone, not only does he approve us, but he's accessible to all. Yes. He's accessible to all. Now, now, now only, only mature believers can swallow this one. Yes. Only mature believers. I'm going to mess up some theology. Only mature believers can swallow this one. I ain't about to say nothing blasphemous. It's, I promise it's all scripture. But he's accessible to all. Somebody say all. 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 So here's. Here's the trouble. Here's the trouble that, that the modern church finds itself in. The trouble we find ourselves in is that we have a gospel that is exclusive and not inclusive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Words too big. Let me help you out. We have a gospel um, that is us versus them. Yeah. Now, we got to break this down because we've dealt with God. We've dealt with is. We dealt with with. But now we got to deal with us. Yes. Who is us? Mm -hmm. Now, in Isaiah chapter 7, us is the people of Judah. Mm -hmm. It's King Ahaz and the people of Judah. That, that's, that's exclusive. Yes, sir. So when the prophet Isaiah is talking to King Ahaz, it's an exclusive us. And they will name him Emmanuel, God with 
us, God with Judah. It's exclusionary. It means it's us versus them. They don't have a part of this blessing. They don't have a part of this victory. They don't have a part of, of this celebration. It's us versus them. However, Matthew lets us know that when Jesus Christ was born, he was the true fulfillment. Can I break this thing down? So there are actually two fulfillments of this scripture. Theologians believe because he told Ahaz it would be a sign to him that he didn't have to be scared because they were going to get the victory. And so shortly after he prophesied that there was a baby born, many believe that it was one of Isaiah's children, but there's some theologians who don't believe it was Isaiah's child. They believe it was another woman, a virgin. And they don't believe it was Isaiah's child because he married the prophetess and so and they already had a child. So she technically wouldn't be a virgin. So they believe it was possibly another woman during that time. And that was the sign to King Ahaz. And sure enough, uh, God's word came true. They had the victory. However, Matthew ties us back to Isaiah and he says not only was Isaiah talking about a baby during that time. But he was looking forward to a baby that would be born this time. And this is why in Isaiah's prophecy, he says, and she will name him Emmanuel. But when Matthew references, he says, we will call him Emmanuel. Uh, because Jesus' name is not Emmanuel. His name is Jesus. His name is Yeshua, which means the Lord saves. His name was not Emmanuel. Oh, uh, but how many know we have names and we have nicknames? In other words, what Matthew says is that we're not going to name him Emmanuel because we have to name him Jesus, Yeshua, the Lord saves. However, we're going to give him a nickname. And no, we're not going to nickname him Pookie. We're not going to nickname him Doodoo. We're not going to nickname him uh, 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 Nikki B. Uh, we going to name him Emmanuel. There are things that we all have a name, but then we also have things we are called. And so Matthew says in the second fulfillment of this, this prophecy, Jesus is going to be born. Yeshua, the Lord saves, but we're going to call him Emmanuel. God is with us. Now we understand the us of Isaiah's time. It was Judah. It was exclusionary. So who is the us in Jesus' time? Well, I believe John chapter 3 makes it plain. In John chapter 3, a brother by the name of Nicodemus comes to Jesus at night because Nicodemus was a part of the Pharisees and the scribes and them, and so he couldn't be seen with Jesus in the daytime. But Nicodemus was liking what he was hearing from Jesus, so he came to night service. He couldn't come to Sunday mornings or Saturday morning service because the folks would have saw him, so he went to night service. And that's a word for some of y'all. Y'all need to be here at 4 o'clock for night service because the bishop got a word in his mouth for you. But Nicodemus came to night service, and when he came to night service, Jesus said, for God so loved somebody. And the somebody that God loved is the somebody who's the us of this, this text. The us is not Judah. The us is not Israel. The us is not you. The us is not the bishop. The us is not me. Because the us is inclusive. Uh, the us is, somebody say everybody. For God so loved everybody that he sent us Emmanuel. Now you ought to be happy because the text goes on to say for God so loved the world uh, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe on him would not perish but have everlasting life. So who's the us? The us is the whosoever. And I I don't know about you, but I ain't always been a saint. I don't know about you, but I ain't always been a holy roller. I don't know about you, but I ain't always been a pastor. I don't know about you, but I ain't always even been a church member. There was a time in my life where I was a whosoever, and because God loved me, ah, he sent Emmanuel, and Emmanuel is not just God with Israel. Emmanuel is not just God with Judah. Oh, but Emmanuel is God with the whosoever now, I just messed you up. Because your religious mind says if God is with everybody, that means he's not just with the believers. Ooh. Ooh. So you mean to tell me that God is with the pedophile? You mean to tell me that God it's with the homosexual. You mean to tell me that 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 God is with the transgender? Oh, let me mess let me mess my friend. You, you you mean God 
is with that person I don't like? Yes, you mean God is with my uncle I loaned $200 to and he still ain't paid me back? Whosoever, whosoever, whosoever. You, you mean God is with that nasty usher at the church door that people with me every time I come in? I'm coming to church with the best clothes I got, but they always got something to say about my outfit, uh, tapping me on the shoulder while I'm in the spirit to tell me to put a throw cloth over my... You mean to tell me that God is with the folks who get on my nerves and God God is with the people who I don't agree with. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not gonna lie to you. I, I struggle with that too. I struggle with that too. Because I say, God, hold on. If, if, if you're with everybody, then 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 what's the benefit? What, what's the benefit? He said, Well, son, it's just like this. Um the gospel. Is inclusive. No, I, I know what modern society says. It says we're an exclusive, divisive faith. That we are not for everybody. That we are only for the few. And this is why folks don't come to church today. But the truth of the matter is the gospel is very inclusive. Again, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believes in him. Whosoever. That's inclusive. That is an open invitation. He says, son, I'm with everybody. The problem is. Everybody ain't with me. <laughs> yes, sir. God knows that's good. That. Right. That is good. Right. Uh, I said, hold on. Make, make that plain. Make that plain. He said, okay. Um, this, this, this for the brothers. This recently on social media, there was a young lady who came under fire because a brother picked her up, was taking her on a date, and the restaurant he said he was taking her to, she got offended. You, you taking me where? You, you, I'm a, I'm a high quality woman. You taking me where? I, women like me don't go to that kind of restaurant. You taking me where? And the brother ended the date on her, left her right where she was. Now there was some back and forth on social media about whether that was right or whether that was wrong. Of course, you had women who were saying she's right. If she a high quality woman, you ought to be taking her to the best of the best. But then there were other women on the other side. It was like, listen, you ought to just be glad that brother want to give you time. Women outnumber men on the earth anyway. You better get you one while you can. The argument was going back and forth. But here's here's the revelation. Here's the revelation. Brothers, I'm going to help you out. If you out there, if you dating, brothers, I'm going to help you out. I don't even think you ought to go out to eat on the first day. Mm -hmm. I don't. Go to the park. Go fishing. Whatever. But but don't spend no money on the first day. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. Because you asking her on the date is because you want to be with her. And if she has a problem with where you're taking her. That means she wasn't with you. She was with the restaurant. She wasn't with you. She was with the movie. Because don't forget, with doesn't just mean besides. With means for. You asked her on the date for her. Some of these sisters just hungry. They accept the date for dinner. And Jesus said it's the same way with the gospel. I died for you. You only come around me for the blessing. I died for you. But you only come around me for the open door. I died for you. And so it's possible for God to be with you. But just because God is with you, don't mean you with God. And this is what separates us from the world. Jesus tells a parable about a king who throws a party and and, and, and throwing the party, he tells his his men to send out invitations. It starts off exclusive. He says, I only want you to send invitations to my friends in them. They send invitations to the friends in them and the friends in them don't show up. They start making excuses. I got this. I got that. I can't come. The king gets upset. And he says, you know what? I done, I done spent all this money. I done do this. It's in your Bible. Jesus tells this parable. He said, I spent all this money. I done, I done put all this good stuff together. I want you to just go out into the streets and invite any and everybody. Who so 
the whosoevers. And the Bible says the whosoevers show up. Mm -hmm. But the king walks in and he sees one person mm -hmm. and he's offended at this person. He said, wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on. How did you get in here like that? Mm -hmm. He was referencing the wardrobe. Mm -hmm. How did you get in here dressed like that? Like that. <clears throat> okay, many people kind of get confused on this text because, of course, uh, nowadays one of the biggest controversies in the church is folks who get chastised for what they wear to church. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. Here's, here's the difference. Because, again, Jesus is telling a parable, which means he's giving a natural application to something spiritual. The king was offended at the fact that he came to the party and he kept his clothes on. The reason he had a problem with that is because a part of the invitation was a wardrobe. Right. So he says, I invited you to the party. And not only did I invite you to the party, I provided the clothes. Yeah. Boom. Here's our issue. We get mad at what you physically come in here with. Come the truth of the matter is, you ought to come to the house of the Lord with whatever you got on. Yeah. I'm going to catch some flack for that. Yeah. But, but come with whatever you got on. We'll deal with the distractions as we need to deal with them. But come to the house of the Lord. Why? Because the invitation is for everybody. For everybody. But once you get in here, watch this. It's up to us not to clothe you physically. It's to, up to us to clothe you spiritually. It's up to us to put on the full armor of God. It's up to us to put on a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. It's up to us to put on the fruit of the spirit. And as we dress you spiritually, you'll start to change your wardrobe physically. And I won't have to tell you not to wear that to church. The Holy Spirit will tell you what to wear to church. And we got to get to a place where the gospel we're preaching is not exclusive, but it's inclusive. It's for Lottie, Dottie, and everybody because I serve a God who's all powerful, which means you might come in here in street clothes, but you're going to leave out of here dressed in righteousness. That's right. He's accessible to everybody. Hallelujah. Stop getting mad at God because yes, he didn't get your permission get about who to say. Say so. Say so. Right. Say so. Right. Stop yeah. getting mad at God because he ain't asked your permission yes, sir. about who to bless. Yes, the Bible says he reigns on the just yes, and the unjust. Yes, but God, I paid my tithe and you ain't blessed yes. me like that. Yes. You ain't even said thank you for the blessings yes. I gave you already. Yes. Come on, yes. And is it possible, Bishop, that we dress up good in church? Watch out now. Watch out now. But we still got our street clothes on in the spirit. Yeah. And there are folks who come to church in their street clothes. Mm -hmm. Oh, but they dress way better than us in the spirit. Hallelujah. They're dressed in forgiveness. Yes, yeah. They're dressed in non-judgment. Yes. They're dressed in unconditional love. Yes. He's accessible to everybody. As we prepare to celebrate Christ's Mass, let's not forget that. We are celebrating a man, you will. God with us. So look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. God is with you. God is with you. But who you with? Who you with? Who you with?